Gentlemen, it is great to see you guys. You know, I was uh, thinking about this when I came down to do this interview. I was thinking about the first time we did this so many years ago. <laughs> and to think about that all this time, I mean, you guys have sold over, what, 25 million albums worldwide. You guys have gone around the world, 30 countries, selling out everywhere you guys go. Did you ever think the success would be the way it is, especially because in the beginning, you guys didn't even know each other. I mean, was Simon Cowell that helped bring you guys together? Yeah, but absolutely nobody had expectations, anything like this. Not even Simon, I'm sure. I mean, it was an ambitious project. He invested a lot in it. He found us. I think we all got lucky that it happened to be the four of us because we've been able to carry it off for so long and hopefully for much longer. But no, it's beyond anybody's expectations and we've just been having a great ride for almost 10 years now. Why do you think this worked? What was it about everybody here that made everything come together the way it did? I think it's because we are, we are from four different countries and then having this, this kind of gentleman, all classic gentleman look and then, and then putting this, this music together like a, like kind of, a, well, we never knew how to call it, but it's like a mix of pop opera or whatever you want to call it. So I, I think it's really something special and an interpretation of, of us four, put it together, it's just, it's just really something unique. I gotta ask you, are you married yet? No, I'm divorced. <laughs> Divorce. Yeah, yeah. You're never, you're never planning on getting married again, are you? Uh, well, I was really close to do it again. That was three years ago, and I didn't, and I ran away. So I'm still, <laughs> so I'm still available, girls. <laughs> no, the reason why I ask is I remember last week we were talking, and we were talking about you were talking about um, what was it, the biggest underwear that was ever thrown over. To you. <laughs> Talk mm -hmm. about that one again. It was, it was a huge underwear, <laughs> but I didn't get married to her, so so, so I'm still available. <laughs> <just said. laughs> you guys have had so many unique. Um, performances. I think one of the most special that we've seen was, of course, of Barbara Streisand. That's right. That was just kind of an amazing memory, you know, going into uh, sharing the stage with her and singing, you know, duets with her and singing on songs as well. Um, that was giving us a chance that was incredible, you know, it's like song singing with Tony Bennett and etc. this kind of generation. And I think, um, you know, when you see her delivering every night a performance, it's never the same. And that's why I find it incredible. There's no one like that I find out there that is just as talented as Barbara. And she's just been the kindest person to us. When you have this kind of success and you're thinking about, well, it's time for a new album, do you think about the past when you're deciding to work on something new? Um, I think there's an element of that that goes on. Um, because, as we said before, it was a great experiment 10 years ago where we were just kind of foraging our way trying to figure out whose voices work with what, and when, and how, and, and, and how to share it, how to stack it. And so we've tried many times to kind of veer away from that, try and reinvent Il Divo, but every time we've done so, it just doesn't sound right, it doesn't feel right. Um, so we are, you know, we're continually investigating new repertoire because when we find new repertoire, this is when the different colors show up in our voices. When, when we hear and feel um, the, the different types of music, for example, the music theater has brought out loads of new colors that weren't there when we were singing just the strict pop songs. It just kind of evokes something from us. And so this is what we do. We, we try and find the different repertoire that will bring out the new colors. And, and that gives us a new, new configuration to, to put it all together. And that, of course, is what we're talking about with a musical affair. What was the decision in picking these songs? Because you guys have some great classics. And of course, you guys are doing it in a way. Yeah, I mean, the thought was that we would limit us to that direction of music theater, but obviously that repertoire is so broad and so rich. We wanted as well have kind of a cross section through all the different ages. So we have stuff that goes all the way back to the 40s and 50s, but also much more recent songs like um, Who Wants to Live Forever that plays on the West End in We Will Rock You and The Lion King and all these things. And I must say, I personally, I've discovered so much beautiful music which I had no clue it was even existing. I knew the more recent stuff like all the Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff, for example, being a European, but I did not know any of the music of stuff like South Pacific or Carousel and that's so beautiful and I enjoy myself so much singing it, especially on stage, so it's definitely worth for everybody to check it out. 
So what was it like then figuring out the El Devo style with these songs? Because you guys do have a certain style, and each individual has their own certain style. So picking who would sing lead for what, how was that? I mean, that must have been a crazy experiment. It was difficult, yeah, because obviously in the musical you cannot just just take a harmony and just do it like like we usually did with the uh, with the pop songs. So uh, we did a kind of a sharing that we were trying each of us parts and and then and then we just did it. Well, the good thing we we just know each other so well that that we have worked for ten years now together. So we just go to the studio and we really figure out really easily how to do it, at least how to share it. And then and then the harmonies they this time he, it just took a little more a little more time. Now, uh, was I correct when I heard some new voices? Were there collaborations other people are singing on this album also? That's right. You have some amazing singers uh, with us, and we've been very lucky again. We have uh, Heather Headley that uh, is singing Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Kristen Chenoweth, uh, with I'll Ask of You. Beautiful song. Uh, Michael Ball is on the record as well, singing with uh, Love. <laughs> Changes everything. Changes everything. That's, I'm losing it, isn't it? Love changes everything. A fantastic song, Barbara Streisand. You know that we've. Um, that's a live performance that we've done. Um, uh, what four years ago, something, and then we. It was really important for us to have it on our record. So she uh, was very pleased. I heard. So he, so we have our record, and I think I'm. And I am, I'm, I'm, li I'm, I'm living the best for last, right? <laughs> Nicole should sing. Yeah, she's so sexy. Uh, Carlos had. A, it was a really tough time for him. You know? So tough to record with her. <laughs> was it tough for her? You? I mean, no, no, did no. something happen here that we don't know anything about, my friend? Uh, it was no. tough to not fall in love with her because <laughs> she's so beautiful. This this girl, and she sings amazingly. I mean, it's unbelievable how she sings and how she. She fits so well in the musical theater. Yeah. And when we, when we did uh, Near Memory with her, and she was amazing, I mean, really, really good. I'm gonna say, uh, I only can, can say beautiful things to her. Yeah. Wow. And, and Carlos is really hard to get, so you would never say I'm very hard to what? Get. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, with beautiful music like this, there has to be a tour, and that is gonna be happening? The tour will be happening uh, next year, 2014, and it's going to be a world tour, and all of the dates, you can find them on ildevo.com. And uh, yeah, we're announcing them territory by territory. Uh, at this point, I know we've announced some of them. Yeah, I do believe, <laughs> I don't know which one. I do believe Toronto. I don't check. No, no, that's okay. I do believe Toronto is going to be May, May 21st. That's, that's right. correct. That's May it. 21st, yes. So what, so what kind of show is it going to be like? Uh, it's basically going to be the show that we did on Broadway, mm -hmm. uh, the six dates that we played there last week. And... Um, yeah, it's uh, with a bit of tweaking and, and a bit of, uh, we, we have to figure out how to take that show, which was very entrenched into that theater, into a touring environment where it's going to fit into this arena, that theater, this and that. Um, but for the most part, it's going to be the same. Wow. There are probably performers as well, you know, hopefully, a nice lady coming with us to sing some songs that would be good. Oh my goodness. Uh, so, so surprises are going to oh, be yeah, happening. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Really good surprises. I mean, the, the musical theater singers and really, really, really big ones. Well, we cannot wait for this. Look, as we wrap this up, what can you say to your fans who have followed you after all these years, who have enjoyed your music and just cannot wait to hear this new album? What would you like to say to them? Well, I'd like to say thank you to everybody, here in Canada especially, because Canada has been embracing us from the very beginning on so strongly. We've always felt great welcome. We felt very much at home and loved and liked here in Canada. Thank you very much, everybody. Check out our new album and our new tour next year. We've got a lot of beautiful, beautiful new music for you. And I hope you continue to like us. We love you. Fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Pleasure.